All web APIs have a contract that states how they will respond to incoming consumer requests. Gandalf is a tool that will test that contract for you so that any changes made during development don't breach or break that contract. So in short, contract testing can be boiled down to the act of ensuring that your web APIs respond in the exact same manner as they've previously stated they would. This guarantees that consumers can trust your API to behave as you promise it behaves. So this is our API. It's super simple. It has a one HTTP endpoint, forward slash health check. It listens on port 8080. And we're using the HTTP router library in order to make all of this nice and simple for us. All we do is we have one endpoint with one handler that just returns a simple JSON document that clearly states message, everything is okay. Response code, HTTP status okay. Super simple, nothing else to it. But out of all of this code, what is the contract? Well, the contract is this structure. It has one field in the JSON document called message with a lowercase m, and it has a second field called response code with lowercase r and a capital C. This is the contract. We're basically saying we're gonna return you a string in a field called message, and we're gonna return a response code, an int, in another field called response code. This is the contract between our API and the rest of the world. This is our test runner. It runs pretty much like any other table driven test. First, we loop over our contracts and then we use a subtest t.run. We pass in the name and we pass in a Lambda, an anonymous function. We use this then to run the contract.assert function, which will then test that the contract is exactly what it should be based on the response from our live API. This is our testing helper function. This function will return a slice of Gandalf contracts. In this case, we only have a single contract. What we're doing here is we're setting the name of the contract to health check OK, and then we're filling in two additional fields, request and check. These are pretty much the core of the contract itself. Request will go out and actually make the HTTP request or whatever request it needs to make in order to get a response back from the API that we're testing. In this case, we're using Gandalf.new simple requester. We're doing a get request against localhost 8080 forward slash health check. And then in the check, another helper type in this case, Gandalf.simple checker. And we're saying we want the status code to be this, the headers to be this, and the body to be that. And when combined and used, the request will be called the response from the request will be passed into the check. The check will then take the fields we filled in, compare it to the response, and if we have a match, we're good. If we don't, then the test has failed. With our REST API in place and running, we can execute our tests and we can see quite clearly that test application contracts forward slash health check successfully passes. This is because the contract coming out of our API matches the contract that a Gandalf expects to see. The header is right, the status is correct, and the body matches the JSON document that we are returning from our API. So what happens when we break the contract? Let's say we've been tasked with making a change to the API, and we change the response that the API returns. So we change the message field to go from M-E-S-S-A-G-E, -S -S and we contract that down to M-S-G. We save, we rerun our API, and we put it in production. Problem is, the contract's now changed. If we run Gandalf against this, we actually see that we get an error. It catches the change in the contract, and it sees that it does not match the contract we've promised our customers. This is the definition of contract testing. Surely by now you can see, just from the simple demonstration, that testing your contracts is really, really important. Any kind of side effect, accidental or purposeful change during a development cycle can break a contract, which will break the trust between your API and the consumers. So testing for any of these changes, making sure that the contracts are always accurate, are always what you expect after a development cycle, makes it harder to introduce these errors. It makes it harder to make these mistakes. So I hope that that's been helpful. I hope that this very short introduction to contract testing and Gandalf has been useful. Please do let me know in the comments whether or not you wanna see more about contract testing, more about testing, and more about Gandalf, and I'd happily do a more in-depth video. Don't forget to subscribe and like so that we know whether or not we're doing a good job, and I will see you in the next video. You shall